I think in today's video we're going to continue using this collision between the Ottawazon and the Porter as a baseline for what we're supposed to believe now between the Fitzgerald and the uh, ACX Crystal. Now the Ottawazon is an enormous vessel. It's basically a small island. I mean, the ACX Crystal was a big ship, but this thing is much bigger, much heavier. 160,000, and you can go here and see it's 1,000 feet long. I mean, this thing's a monster. And it had the ability to deliver a much worse punch to the porter than the ACX Crystal would have. I mean, even if this thing was only moving five knots, it would deliver the same relative force as if the ACX Crystal would have been moving at almost 30. Just because of the sheer size and weight difference. And the ACX Crystal, to by all accounts, was moving at, the mo at most 18 knots, and by some accounts, only 14. Yet somehow, in almost an identical collision, a collision that I think you could make an argument that should have caused quite a bit less damage because both ships were traveling, generally speaking, allegedly, in the same direction as opposed to this accident where they were almost nose to nose. I mean, how did the porter get out of a collision with a vessel six times the size of the crystal getting hit in almost the exact same way? Now, given it was only moving at five knots, but it was nose to nose. So that means you have to add the resultant forces. You know, if you have two cars that are side by side and one's merging into, into a lane and you've got them, um, to say they're both moving 70 miles an hour, you know, relative to each other, they're not really moving. Only the sideways amount of force is what you would have to take into account is if they hit each other. And that was basically what was going on with the crystal and the fits but in this case they were they were head to head and so when this thing collided even with the porter only moving five knots you have to assume that this thing was probably moving at least that this thing should have crushed the porter this thing should have cut it in half and put it on the bottom based on what damage we saw to the fits and if we're supposed to believe the circumstances of that is what they're telling us I mean, giant gash below the waterline, a warped superstructure so bad that it's screwing up the radar. It's going to be out of commission for a year. It's going to have to go back to the States on a heavy lift ship. It's just... Here's a better picture of how massive this thing is that, that basically just inconvenienced the porter. And it was, because they pulled into Jebel Ali, they fixed the thing, and they rejoined the, the strike group, and they came in together to Norfolk. It just gets stranger and stranger. I mean, this was the damage to the porter. And I was reading through the transcript of the email from yesterday's video that the kids sent, and they had water lines that had bursted, and it was pouring all over energized equipment, and their radio and their comms were down too. And they'd lost air conditioning on the ship, and they made the ship uninhabitable. It was 130 degrees below decks. So this thing has problems. But apparently they were able to make contact with the Navy because the first person, that person, the first organization that reported this was the Navy. It wasn't the Panamanians. It wasn't anybody from over there. This idea that the... Uh, Philippine crew called the Japanese Coast Guard and then the Japanese Coast Guard called the Navy and told the Navy what happened. And then when the Japanese Coast Guard said that, okay, the collision happened at 220, the Navy was, oh, okay, at 220. And then the Japanese Coast Guard changes its mind and says 130, then the Navy says, well, okay, it's 130. Doesn't that lend you to believe that the Navy doesn't have any intelligence of its own? That is just going on what the Japanese Coast Guard is saying? That doesn't strike anybody as odd? Even if you're still believing this is an accident, the way it all went down is just unbelievable. I mean, what would have happened if they would have sunk it? 
I mean, because it was touch and go there for a while. They said it was an incredible effort by the crew. God bless them all. But it wasn't a guarantee this thing was going to be saved. If they would have sunk it and kept going for 20, 25 minutes and then turned around and came back and the ship was already below the waves, what would they have done then? Would they have called the Coast Guard and said, we think we sank something, we don't know what it was, but there's a bubbles coming up over here and maybe somebody should, you know, call somebody to see if they're missing a ship and then eventually the Navy figures it out, what, you know, six hours, eight hours a day later? Is that what we're supposed to believe, <laughs> seriously, is the case? I know that's silly, but it, but they could have sunk it. I mean, given the forces involved and where it was hit and... This idea that the, and that we still haven't seen any picture from anything below the waterline. And that the commander, the captain of the boat, is still the captain of the boat. In the porter, they had uh, relieved him of, I believe, command within two days. They relieved him of duty within two days, command by the 30th. So almost instantaneously. In, in that they didn't take three weeks of investigation to figure that one out five years ago why why three weeks in total silence and non-disclosure agreements and no independent investigations i mean this looks like a big ship but compared to the that oil tanker it's not i live here in northern florida and up by the dames point bridge near naval station mayport there's a big port there, civilian port there as well. We see ships like this all the time. And when you get down up close to one of these things, I mean, they can block out the sun, they're so big. And that's one of these, forget an oil tanker. That allegedly smacked this thing so hard that it's warped the superstructure. You know, and there's this whole thing with the missile and the things that the channel is alleging could have happened. You know, we're going to continue to speculate about those things. Because the story doesn't add up. And you know what? And I'll make a promise to everyone out there. If the U.S. Navy comes out and states that this was something other than an accident, but for national security reasons, they cannot divulge the details of the investigation, I'll relent. I will absolutely relent as long as they acknowledge that this was not an accident. That something else completely happened. I don't want them to reveal all the details. I was an MI guy. I know how investigations work. So that's my promise to you. If, they, if the Navy comes out and all they have to do is just acknowledge that the circumstances are incredibly suspect, and you know what? And even to this day, I dare somebody to go out there and find me someplace where the Navy has said this was an accident. I've heard incident, and I've heard collision, and I've heard event, but I have not heard accident. You know, and I was reading some different things about the language the Navy is using with this, that they're not going to make any determination about this until their investigation is complete is a complete 180 from what they did on the porter. And you can't say that, well, they had bridge audio. They, had, they have bridge audio here. I guarantee they do. I guarantee they have exactly as much information here about this one as they did the porter. So, anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. Now, one other minor thing, and I will get you guys down to the comments and let you guys talk about this, um, why net? Now there was this plan to uh, test that over there, this uh, anti-air missile system the US has. But reading through this, I found an interesting little thing. And let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Earlier this month, Moscow and Beijing, in a joint statement, called on Washington to immediately halt deployment of THAAD in South Korea. So, the channel has maintained that there was this Russian-Chinese thing going on in conjunction with North Korea. 
And given that they didn't each make separate statements, they came out with a joint statement condemning the U.S. putting an anti-ballistic missile system in South Korea. So what do you think, folks? I do really appreciate all of the commentary, both the ones that agree and disagree. You know, watch the language. If you, you know, want to attack the ideas, attack the ideas. You know, but to attack me personally or go down that road, it just takes away from the discussion, and it's not necessary. And I don't want to delete comments, and I don't want to, you know, block people, but we're going to try to use this channel as a forum to discuss this and bring these things to the forefront. And I very much appreciate all of the experience and the wisdom and the technical knowledge that everyone has brought here. I would really like someone down in the comments to do the force mass acceleration thing to figure out what it would have taken to deliver a punch like that, you know, versus, with the Ottawazan versus the Crystal. Given that both ships that were involved in the collision on the Navy side were identical. And the place on the boat that was hit was both identical. So, anyway, 11 minutes. Too long a video. Um, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.